Hi folks, I have your latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for week ending April 7th. Before we get into the numbers, and you should know there's a, there's been a dip in sales and prices, but before I get into all that, I just want to continue on a little bit from what I mentioned in my previous report. In the previous report, I mentioned that the government in all likelihood was going to step in and figure out how to try to calm the prices. So let me just elaborate on that. And, and I got, sorry, I've just got my cheat notes here because I don't want to forget anything. So my thoughts on the government jumping in. Do, do I, first of all, do I like the fact that prices are increasing at the rate that they're increasing? No, I don't like it. Remember, I live in this market also. But as a full-time realtor, I work in this market. My team, Team Sessa, we work in this market and we've, we've pivoted, we've adapted to how we work and properly represent our clients in selling and buying in the current market conditions with the, with the pandemic. We've adapted the way we run our business. Now, do I expect the government at some point to jump in? Yes. Why? They can't help themselves. There's so much outcry from, from the public. From, from big shots in, in the different parts of our industries, from the banking industries, from the finance industries. There's so many people asking the government to do something. Uh, do I want the government to get involved? No, I don't. In, in an ideal situation, it's the government to me, it's the government that created the situation that we're in. You see, it, it's, it's really all about the way I see things supply and demand and any kind of outside forces are going to affect supply and demand so lowering of interest rates to an all-time low what does that do that has brought up increased demand for people that want to buy so there's been first-time home buyers that have had a plan in the next two years three years they're going to jump into the market well the fact that interest rates have come this low they've jumped in, so more demand. The fact that we've got these stay-at-home orders, people are reevaluating their living situation, and they've jumped in to buy, and they've increased demand. But what has that done to have done to supply? Well, if you think of the situation we're in now, people are working from home, and if they're thinking of selling, what a lot of them are doing is actually buying first, which makes sense in this market, so less listings but more pressure on buying and then there's people that right now especially right now in this period that have kids at home from the march break we have the stay at home orders they they don't want the public walking through their home so they're not i have clients doing this right now they're not putting their home on the market because they don't want strangers coming into their house for the health crisis so there's been a suppression of listings, but demand, so supplies down and demand is up. This is where the problem is. So I think any, any kind of solution has to deal with increasing supply. Everything the government seems to be doing or has done in the past or is thinking of doing deals with suppressing demand but it doesn't deal with the issue of increasing supply. So that's why I don't want the government to get involved. I'd love to see, uh, and I think we're seeing some of the natural markets shifting right now. I think we're starting to see more and more buyers getting frustrated with the whole multiple offer situation. And we're seeing that where it's starting to calm down the volume of offers on a home. And we're seeing buyers kind of pulling back a little bit and we're seeing sellers starting to get onto the market a little bit more, but that's also a spring issue as weather warms up. So we're starting to see it kind of sort of get closer to where it needs to be, but we're still far from it. And I, I don't think the government has the right tools to deal with supply. They could open up other areas for more development, but that's a long-term process. And, and even if today they said, all this other land now is available for development. Well, we're not going to see the result of that for another three, four, five, six years down the road. So that's my issue. 
I don't want the government to get involved. I expect them to get involved. And whatever you need, let us know. We're full-time realtors in the market every single day. Okay, let's get into the numbers. I have here for the city of Toronto. This is just for detached. Now sales for a couple weeks in a row now have come down a little bit. Is this something to get alarmed about? Well, we need to take a little bit more time to see what's happening. But remember, we are in a stay at home order now, which helps kind of let us know what's happened for this week. For week ending April 7th, the Easter four day break was right in the middle of that. And every year we see sales kind of slow down a little bit come Easter time. I'm not making excuses. I'm giving you the reality of what's happening out there. So sales have come down a little bit. The amount of properties of detached home selling at $2 million or more has dropped down by quite a bit. Now, it was increasing for, for several weeks in a row to some high numbers at 89 the previous week. This week, only 53 properties sold at $2 million or more, which helps to explain why average sold price has dropped as much as it did. So the average detached home sold for 1,636,000 last week. It's still high, but it has come down quite a bit from where it was before. Comparing to last year at this time, well, we shouldn't. Last year at this time, we started our first lockdown and nobody knew what was going on and everything came to a grinding halt. We've adapted since there. We're in a lockdown now, but it hasn't seemed to really change what's going on in the market out there. Um, however, just to kind of give you a, an idea, last year we sold 10 properties at $2 million or more. This year we sold 53, which is down from last week, but way up from last year. But I said we're not comparing to last year at this time, so <laughs> let's not do that before I get carried away. Looking at sales, I've already said sales have come down over the last few weeks, but with last week, we sold 262, 74% of them sold at list price or more. So there's lots of action, lots of offer dates, lots of multiple offers on a property, people paying over asking. Listings are up a little bit. So sales have come down, listings have come up. This could help to put some more inventory onto the market. It's the spring market. We're expecting more inventory anyways that could help and give us a bit of a relief. Now, months of inventory has gone, I'm, I'm almost urged to say has shot up because it went from 0.7 to 0.9. Wow, we're at 0.9 months of inventory, the highest we've seen in weeks. And so average sold price has come down from a record price of a little over 1.8 to 1,636,000 months of inventory has gone up. Still very much a seller's market. I, I could easily put a headline, amounts of, inventor, amounts of inventory has gone up. Hey, we're at 0.9, incredibly low. It's still very much a seller's market. Nothing really has changed there. Let's take a closer look at, uh, at, at semis. Months of inventory has come up a little bit also to 0.6. The average sold price for semis has come down. Last week, the average semi sold for 1,264,000. And of these 86 that were sold last week, 87% of all semis were sold at list price or more. It's a very tight market. Sem, if you're looking to buy a semi, good luck. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle out there. And if uh, you're looking to sell a semi, you should have no problem getting top, top dollar. When we look at townhouses, months of inventory for weeks now has been steady at 0.6. Average sold price keeps going up. 1,242,000 is what the average townhouse sold for last week in the city of Toronto. So now townhouses and semis are pretty close in average sold price. And there was only 39 townhouses sold last week. 74% of those were sold at list price or more. Very tight market, very competitive. And we know that by looking at, you know, 0. 0.6 months of inventory. Okay, let's dive deep into the condo market. Sales for from 
Previously, if we look at the end of February, sales were going up every single week. So now for the last two weeks in a row, they've come down. Are we on a trend? The same thing here happened with Detach. Prices have been coming down the last couple of weeks. Is it a trend? It's tough to say because there's other factors involved. It, it, everything could just bounce back over the next couple of weeks. We had our Easter break here, April 7th. We were told, hey, there's a stay at home order. That affects things a little bit, but will we bounce back in the next couple of weeks? Let's see. Uh, so the av we sold 421 condos last week. The amount that sold at a million dollars or more went from 38 to 26. So there's a big drop there. And the average sold price is now sitting at 686,000. It's come down slightly for, for a couple of weeks now. Compared to last year, we don't want to do that. But last year we sold four at a million dollars or more. This year, 26 at a million dollars or more. I'm surprised because of that big difference in, in, in the selling of the luxury condos that we're only 9% higher from where we were at last year's average sold price. I would expect this number to be much higher. So condo prices are still suppressed, but overall heading in, in the right direction, we're seeing more activity in condos. So of the 421, 68% of those sold at list price or more. So it's, it's competitive, but that's down a little bit. We're at 73% and 70%. So we're kind of hovering there at 68% sold at list price or more. Listings are up. So sales are down. Listings are up. This is going to help control prices, but we're going to see what happens when, when we're in a, uh, like a holiday situation, like an Easter, an Easter heading into spring, we will often see sales come down slightly, but people are, that are looking to put their property on the market are gearing up for it for the spring. So we see listings coming on usually and sales do tend every year to come down a little bit. Looking at months of inventory for condos went up slightly. We're at 0.8 months of inventory for condos, incredibly low still. And when we look at the overall summary, the home types. So for detached, sitting at 0.9, again, this is just for Toronto. Semis, 0.6 months of inventory. Towns, 0.6 months. Condos, 0.8 months of inventory. Overall, it's very much a seller's market. Yes, we've seen a decline in sales for a couple weeks in a row now. Yes, we've seen a decline in average sold prices for a couple weeks in a row now. I, I, I'm not going to jump on and say, wow, things are down. You're going to see maybe some headlines on that and, and trying to get you to, to read the reports. But overall, it's still difficult to say whether this is a trend or it's just a temporary and everything's going to turn around the other way in the next week or two. Hey, listen, I appreciate you watching. Oh, well, you should know we have this amazing, uh, um, a, a, amazing assignment opportunity coming up at Playground Condos at Garrison Point. It's a two bedroom, two bath with a parking, beautiful lake view and downtown view. Let me know if you're interested in an assignment, buying an assignment condo at Garrison Point. It's on the 30th floor, beautiful views. Let me know, we got that coming up. My name is Santos Sessa with 3MAX Premier. I love your comments below. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you're reminded when these videos come up. Have an awesome day and stay safe.